All right, welcome back everybody. My name is Pratash here with Kaizen Crypto, bringing you guys another video. So I hope you guys are all doing well, that you're having a great day. Today is Tuesday, March 31st of 2020. So what I wanted to share with you guys here in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at some developments here with Cardano. Recently, the team members at IOHK, Emergo, and the Cardano Foundation came out to give an update for the Byron reboot. So giving you guys a brief overview, sharing some clips and sharing with you some of my thoughts regarding that. And then we're also gonna be taking a look at this piece of news. Emergo releases a blockchain-based traceability solution for enterprises. So this is the first traceability solution from Emergo. Giving you guys my thoughts on all of that here in this video. So guys, if you do find some value, be sure to drop a like for me. And if you guys are new to the channel and if you enjoy content like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button. I wanna keep you guys informed and up to date. Be sure to click that notification bell so you can get notified when I post a new video. So what we're taking a look at, a brief update here with the Cardano Byron reboot. So we're anticipating that pretty much right now, maybe within the next couple days. And then shortly after is gonna be the Shelly Haskell testnet. So here are some of the thoughts that were mentioned in this update video. I wanna go ahead and play that clip for you guys here and just kind of give you an idea as to where we stand currently. Kevin, Kevin um, uh, just merely to close this conversation off, I suppose, more than anything else. Um, we sort of talked about that, the Haskell testnet. Obviously, again, yeah. the learnings from the ITN are gonna be a significant part of that. We will be reaching out to some of the state pool operators in the community over the course of the next few weeks. Um, and we'll be looking for some early people to help us with our documentation. Is that correct? That, that's right. So we're re reaching out to people. We'll be uh, publishing um, documentation and other informa information. Uh, you'll be able to uh, download and install the code. And the plan is to make available a standard uh, AWS instance. So you'll be able to pick that up and use it uh, yourself. So there'll be plenty of opportunity, plenty of scope uh, to tune things. And I can see people saying, how long do we expect the test net to last realistically? This to be the top question. Obviously, we can't answer that uh, because we're going to make it as good as we possibly can. Uh, but coming soon is, is the short answer. OK. Well, Kevin, thank you very much for the update. Um, we'll uh, hopefully see you next month and we'll have further news on the rollout of the Haskell Shelley test nest. So thank Great. you, Kevin. Thanks, Kevin. All right, so that is pretty much what we're looking at here with the Shelley Haskell test net. Very excited to see how the stake pool operators are going to be able to receive that and uh, how quickly we can get these stake pool operators to transition in preparation for Shelly. So next up, a, another clip from that update video talking about some of the different features with Daedalus. So the Daedalus wallet has definitely undergone quite a few updates, uh, especially on the testnet version. And what they're doing here, once we get um, Shelly live on the mainnet, we're gonna be able to continue refining the Daedalus wallet through a feature that they've created that allows a mainnet client, so you have your Daedalus wallet, and then you can simultaneously be able to test certain features and send different feedback uh, inquiries to the developers who work on Daedalus to improve the UI and create new features and whatnot. So we're gonna be taking a look at that here. Here's the clip talking about the Daedalus wallet. So here on the left side, I have production version of Daedalus, and here on the Right side, I have Daedalus Flight. Um, and this is actually blocking my screen. OK. Uh, so the first thing you will see when you install Daedalus Flight is um, it has a new team. So this this team uh, is the, the only team available in this version of Daedalus. And that's because we wanted to differentiate it from the production version of Daedalus. And it also has this icon here, which opens this, uh, the screen, which explains what the flight product is and how it should be used and who should be using it. Um, so the, the only thing I did so far, I just installed the flight version of Daedalus. And I, I obviously let it sync. Um, and it detected all of my wallets from the production version of Daedalus. And it migrated them over or imported them here. So um, 
this will happen for all users who are actually using Daedalus and um, who have wallets in their Daedalus production version of Daedalus. Uh, OK, so next, um, wallet import uh, uh, created two wallets here. And one of these wallets, uh, this one, doesn't have a spending password. Spending passwords were not mandatory in the previous uh, version of Daedalus, but the, now they are mandatory. So the first time I click on this wallet, I will actually need to set a spending password, which is a good idea generally. So this wallet is completely unusable until I set a spending password. And now my wallet has all the features that we are used to having in the production version of, of Daedalus with some additions. For example, if I go to the same wallet and I go to transactions, and it only has a couple. Uh, here, here we on the Daedalus Lite version, we have transaction filtering. So it's a neat feature which uh, lets you filter transactions by incoming and outgoing, by the time and the amount of ADA. And the very neat feature is this one all transactions, which actually pre-populates data with uh, minimum and maximum amounts for all of these values. So my minimum transaction in this wallet is 066 ADA, and my maximum transaction is 1 ADA. So I can kind of know what can I filter from. Then <clears throat> we have completely redesigned wallet restoration. Uh, it now has multiple steps. Uh, and it also support. We are also supporting your OI wallets, so you you can restore your your, your OI wallet here in Daedalus, and it will be completely functional. And it will have the same state because the state lives on the blockchain, and you can continue using both your OI and Daedalus and compare user experiences. So this restoration wizard is now multi-step wizard. I'm not sure if we have time to for me to enter. Um, this one set of recovery phrases. Here we go. Oh, I made a mistake. Um, never mind. I, the, the thing I wanted to show you is that uh, um, the, this, wall, uh, this step of entering wallet recovery phrases is a discrete step um, because we wanted to make sure that user understand that the only thing that you need to restore a wallet is just uh, the wallet recovery phrase. So in the next step, you are setting the wallet name and spending password. Then <clears throat> there is one more thing. I will close this window. There is one more important thing to show you that there are obviously a lot of small uh, improvements which we were developing during the course of um, incentivized testing. Uh, but the one more important feature here is um, changes to the send form. So if I want to receive a that in this wallet and i go to yet the other one and i enter oh, this wallet doesn't have so we have added uh this warning um to confirm transaction dialogue uh, because we want to make sure that uh, anyone who is using that slide is using mainnet and these are real mainnet ada transactions and they are irreversible so in order to make a transaction, I would need to type my spending password. And I also need to confirm this by using this checkbox. So that's kind of the, the most important things. We have parity with what we had before, but um, we also have some nice additions. All right, you guys. So I do hope that you enjoyed it and you found some value from that. Just a brief clip talking about some of the different things we're looking at here with Daedalus. Link to that video down in the description below. If you guys do wanna check it out, be sure to check it out. I think you will find some value from it. But these are just some of the clips that I found most notable. And last up, what I have for you guys, Emergo releases a blockchain-based traceability solution for enterprises. Very cool to see this coming from Emergo. This is going to be 
uh, in Indonesia, so Jakarta, Indonesia. The global blockchain solutions provider and founding entity for Cardano announced the launch of Emergo Traceability Solution, an enterprise solution leveraging blockchain technology to modernize existing supply chain traceability standards and bring added value to supply chain stakeholders and end users. So this is the first blockchain-based enterprise solution developed by Emergo's Enterprise Unit. They partnered with Blue Corinchi Coffee, I'm not sure if I pronounced that right, an environmentally conscious Indonesian coffee brand to be the first commercial enterprise to integrate Emergo traceability solution in its coffee supply chain to benefit all stakeholders, including farmers and consumers. Nice, very cool. So they're gonna be bringing Cardano's blockchain to these consumers, these producers, and what this is gonna do, it's gonna provide tremendous use case for the Cardano blockchain. So guys, very cool to see that. Um, you know, if you guys wanna check out this article as well, I'm gonna be sure to link to it down in the description below. Amazing to see the amount of work being put into this project and uh, very excited for the future as we continue forward. All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching. If you stuck around to the very end, I love each and every one of you guys. Thank you so much again. Be sure to hit that like button for me on your way out, and I will see you guys in the next one. Take care.